What kind of shotgun do you get for the same price as a chocolate bar? One of these. So this gun costs £1.30. pence. That's the equivalent of $1.66. But it's in a pretty sorry state, so I'm going to spend one day getting this gun fighting fish. Shouldn't have done that. Including a full service, new pad, and a bit of stock work. Before taking it out to smash some clays and trying to see how much I can convince someone to pay me for it. 300 quid. Holtz Auctioneers did a no reserve auction to clear out some of the stuff that nobody else wanted and this was one of them. So today we're going to take this piece of junk and hopefully turn it into a less nasty gun. Let's look over it and see what we're dealing with. The gun itself is a Sussex Armoury over and under, made by B. Rizzini in Italy over 30 years ago. It's clearly not seen a lot of love of late. It's got a dried out gun oil stained stock, a barrel rusted brown and an action covered in thick black crud. On top of that, all the working parts feel like they operate in slow motion. Holding it in my hands, I was dreading the day ahead. First thing we're going to do is remove the Holt stickers. Generally considered bad luck, but I'm going to take them off because it's all part of the refurb process. And then what we're going to do is strip it down and see what we're working with on the inside. Give it a service. It's always a good way to do it. It's nice to have the apron out, to be honest. That's a refreshing thing. Lube your holes. Then shove it in. The majority of pads are held on by Phillips screws. I said occasionally you'll get old guns that are not, and that's a pain in the bum. The flatheads generally tear up the rubber pads a little bit. This rubber pad is shot. I fear we will need a replacement. I was five minutes in, and honestly, I was starting to dread what the rest of the day had in store. Down in this hole is a flathead screw. Depending on the gun, you'll find some of them actually need a socket set, some have a special tool, but this one takes a flathead. Keep turning until you hear that. That means that thread is slipping over and riding back on itself, which means now, ta ooh. There was never a simpler action on earth than this. Luckily enough, the action was a variant of a classic Rizzini design with only a few changes. It could have been much worse and been some sort of experimental design just for Sussex Armoury. I now knew that if it didn't work, we may be able to find spare parts somewhere in the building. This action was gagging for a strip and clean. But first, I stripped the four end iron out of the woodwork, ready to see if the gun actually went bang. To test operation, we use cut off cartridges. Just cut the end of a cartridge, pull the powder, pull the wad, pull the shot out. And all you're left with is the primer and the head. You can get fancy gauges, but well, who doesn't have a lot of scrap ammo lying around? Obviously best to use fresh, but I don't have any fresh. Well, I do. I'm not going to waste it on this. It's one of those guns that if you actually loaded it with two game shells in the current market, you would double its value. Cut-offs in, put the end on something like this. Very simply. Well, hey, it works. Change over. They've slipped past the ejectors. It's pretty dumb of me, really. Shouldn't have done that. Instead of just bashing these out, I'm actually going to take the ejectors out at this point. So we're just going to get the appropriate size screwdriver, stick it in the hole, and hope this turns out without tearing it to shreds. Oh, look at that. Somebody did once put some lubrication on this when putting it together, and I thank them for that at this stage. That's the retaining piece there. How very small that is. Let's put that in our pot so we do not lose it. At this stage, you need to take the pressure off the ejector retaining piece before pulling it out. Once this is out, the ejector is free to remove, as is the ejector spring and spring guide. These were properly coked up and in need of a lot of lube. After this, I used a small tool to depress the retaining plunger under the ejector coupling plate. And due to the dirt that had built up here, I needed to persuade it out with a punch before starting on the other side. Ejectors out, let's give these bores a good clean. I'm not going to opt for any bore solvent, I'm just going to go with a bit of gun oil and see where that gets us. There's quite a bit of rust in there, so I think I might get a mechanical aid. When your body can't get the job done, it's often best to bring in an electric friend. This, I'm just going to put a aluminium rod in. I'm going to wrap a little bit of wire wool around the end and we're going to go for it. Mm -hmm. 
type of ball cleaner, something more aggressive to hopefully cut through the rust. Electrics completed. Make a little ball with paper. Shove it in your bore end. Ram it through with the back of a rod. Always feel like I'm firing muzzle loaders at this point. Hey, look at that. See, the chambers are ever so slightly pitted, but the bore being chromed is absolutely tidy. A few little bits of lead fouling in there that we could still take out, but uh, that's the beauty of a 30 second job. Electric friends. Everybody needs one. Hey, we've removed the rust, but there is some severe pitting in that top chamber. Severe, strong, light, very light. You wouldn't worry about it, not from a safety point of view, but uh, at least we took the rust out. We've done our job. This is as clean as it will ever be. I don't think there's even a point in measuring up, but we will measure up the choke. I quickly measured the internal bores of the gun, which were, of course, in proof. So seven to one of an inch. And checked the chokes to find out that they were cylinder and improved cylinder. Run it to the cylinder, there you go, absolutely no choke in the bottom barrel. A little open for my tastes, but they'll still get the job done. I've been thinking long and hard about these barrels. I think the bottom line is that we just need to clean them up. Rebluing them is a no, spray painting them with like oven bake on paint is a no. Mostly because oven spray paint paint is now 20 pounds. Let's clean them up, let's keep this gun semi-honest. And all we're gonna use for that is wire wool, oil, and elbow grease. And so now, the hard work begins. Right. Scrubbing that barrel clean with well-oiled 4.0 wire wool. This mark on the side is actually looks like where someone's ground that barrel. Who's that four end wood? To fit the four end wood? Same on the other side here. The metal is very much abrased in the areas the four end is. Who knows what that's about? I've never seen anything like that before. There's a little bit of epoxy on the inside of this four end. Maybe that's to stop it rattling around, but to see that actually cut away at the barrels is wild. There was nothing I could do about this and seeing as though it was safe to shoot, I spent another 45 minutes on these barrels until they were grime free and it was time to start on the action. I'm gonna strip this action down. I think I'm gonna polish the action up because it's gonna make a nice difference and hopefully will draw people's attention away from the barrels. It shouldn't be a hard action to strip. I had to get some brute force out in order to remove the firing pin. It's pretty rusted and mangled, so we'll clean that up on the lathe in a bit. Oh, there we go. Safety spring out. Safety catch out. Glad I'm filming this because I ain't got a bloody clue how to put it back together. You can feel the congealed joint gun can grind when you work this top lever. I reckon when this is clean, this gun will actually feel quite nice. I mean, Rizzini's are well built guns, always have been. Not particularly expensive, but well built guns. Our firing pin springs and our top lever spindle. Alright, that's pretty much done. After a stressful strip down, encountering a few of those slight variations I spoke about, I realized I would run out of time if I were trying to get this gun done today, so I drafted in Big Mike to clean, polish, and oil all of those internal bits. These were way worse than they first looked, 25, 30 years of grime. but a few hours of work had all the internals shinier than new. I'm gonna take this action in the meantime start polishing. This might surprise you, but this action color is actually a buildup of dirt and rust. So my plan was to polish it off and see how it came up. Just started to polish off this top tank here. A few hours of tedious polishing, 
consuming lots of oil and lots of paper, revealed that it wasn't too pitted underneath and actually looked pretty sweet. So I stopped there, leaving it silver to start on the stock. First thing was to remove some of the dirt that was left from the old finish. On the bottom here you can see oil staining. This is where people talk about leaving oil on your gun and putting it in storage and it running down to the stock and it can happen but from experience you need to put a lot of oil on there. It needs to be dirty oil. Just generally speaking you should be alright. Just use an intelligent oil quite like some of the natural ones out there because that really never damages wood. With only three hours left of the day there obviously wasn't time for a London finish but it wouldn't have taken much to improve what was there. After the stock was clean, I did a little reshaping to the point of the comb, increasing how well your hand fitted the grip, and also improving the looks of the gun inside profile. At this point, it's just about natural feel. It's about how far we come back and down with this scallop on this side, just depend on how it feels in the hand. The checkering on this gun was completely filled with grime and worn down to nothing in most places. To redo all of this would be best part of a day's work. So I opted to quickly chase out the border before trying to find a replacement butt pad. But it needs length as it was only 14 and a quarter inches with that on. And in order to be a bit more multi-purpose, I'd like it to be 14 and three quarter. This is the original slip pad by Frankie. There's got to be something in here that's another half an inch. This isn't quite long enough, but it's what we're going to use. It is a server letty pad. They're right. Obviously, if you're working with a nice stock and nice wood, you'd tape it up, you'd take it back, and then you'd hand finish it, take it off the gun, hand finish it until it was about half a millimeter round, smooth off the edge so it blends in. But I'm running out of time and patience. <laughs> Let's get this sanded up. After rubbing off some wood, it was time to add some finish like it was actually going to be a reveal it's a grade one piece of wood there is no reveal excuse me that's the best wood in the whole world it's the best wood you can buy for a pound i mean it's ch cheaper than firewood mush i left this to dry and started on the action reassembly now it was all clean and polished the parts slid back together easily, with almost no issues. And as the day drew to a close, I performed a quick function check to make sure I had done my job right. Before we go and shoot it, let's have a proper look over what one pound buys you. I hesitate to call this gun finished because it's not really, but a more than a day of my life, perhaps I'd start to resent actually working on it. Let's look over now what we have. We have a Rizzini action built for Sussex Armoury. The action is now silver. It has light border engraving that you couldn't seal before, engraved trunnions and a slight border around the outside. The top lever is black, as is the selective safety catch, which works. What's interesting is the action was always tight, indicating this gun hadn't done a lot, but just had not been loved. The stock now has a slightly nicer, sharper profile and fits the hand really nicely. The grip might be a bit shallow, but hey, that we weren't going to increase on this. The checkering is well worn, but at least the border dictates where it was. The pad is a hand fitted pad, nice soft foam, so that should soak up the recoil through this relatively light gun with 25 inch barrels. The barrels are choked improved cylinder and cylinder and have a 10 mil non tapered rib on the top with a bead sight on the front. The forend is a beaver tail, pretty unexotic, and realistically we didn't do a lot other than just clean and service it and that took an entire day to say i'm excited about shooting it wouldn't be entirely true more morbidly curious we're gonna have a few shots today and i'm gonna take it out for a full whack tomorrow the smell of the dirt is on i don't know what we've done to the value of this gun so far but one thing's for sure we've just doubled it let's see if it works oh! It worked, and it broke both clays. This is a good omen, a very good omen indeed. The ejectors work, it works, absolutely no drama. I think we've done a good thing. This now needs to go away and I need to get back to filming the gun review 
episode four. Can't wait to shoot it some more tomorrow. At this point, I was feeling pretty happy with myself. We took a gun that cost the same as a cheeseburger and looked the same as it once digested and turned it into something pretty good. It looked good, it handled well, and hey, it wasn't a complete train wreck. Again, a working gun for that much money and one day's investment in time, I was happy, but I wasn't fully happy until I found out what someone was willing to pay for it. So I took it along to a TGS Members Day at Barbary. We had a lot of fun shooting around and then I took the gun out and we had a play. I managed to get most people to have a go with it, even though it was junk. And most people, well, pretty much everyone who shot it hit something with it. The cheeseburger gun did well. However, about halfway round, we found that with heavy loads, it double discharged, and that caught a few people out. However, back on the Hull Sporting 100s, it did the job nicely. I even managed to convince people to try and make me an offer on it, and some of them were good. Make you an offer. Thumbs up, right? I don't need to re-black. Oh, come on. <laughs> Three hundred quid. And some of them were bad. I always say it's not the length, it's the quality. <laughs> this has neither. It's worth every penny. How much was it, Johnny? One pound thirty. What a gun for one pound thirty. Barrels are nice, nice and clean inside. One pound seventy-five. But everyone agreed that this gun was worth saving, and that brought a little bit of warmth to my heart. Guys, thank you for sharing this journey with me. It's been a lot of fun, a little bit of a headache, but I tell you what, I really forgot about it until I watched the footage back. Because once you've done the day, once you've done the work, you get the pride of looking at what you've done. And pride might not be the right word for it, but there's no shame in what I did. I'm glad my friend bought a $2 shotgun from Holtz Auctioneers. It was definitely a gamble, but it paid off. What should we do next? Thank you for watching, guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day. Be careful when doing anything to your gun at home that you don't play with the action or barrel unless you are a qualified and trained gunsmith. Woodwork, well, we can all play with that. Cleaning, we can all do that. And disassembly, even that. Just make sure you put it back together properly and safely. And if in doubt, consult a trained professional.